Oh, yeah, sorry, I didn't know I was rolling. It started without my permission. Welcome to Chess, ladies and gentlemen. All right, cool. So I have a uh, a nice uh, Philippines versus Philippines game for you. Um, so anytime I do videos on Roderick Nava, I have to go through and make sure on his page um, that he does not have the game done because I don't want to uh, pick out a game. Uh, you know, when you when you're doing chess analysis, uh, there are some there are some people who don't do their own analysis. Um, so it's not really personal. You're just kind of grabbing the games and doing the analysis. Uh, but when uh, there are fellow YouTubers um, actually doing, you know, when they when they play, when they do analysis and when they pick their own games to do, um, I like to try to stay away from the games that they've already done. Um, so that way I'm not grabbing, you know, kind of videos, kind of piggybacking on their own videos. I would not appreciate if somebody did that to me, uh, you know. So anyway, um, I have, uh, you know, the Roderick Nava versus Julio Cisador. And this is taken from the 2012 uh, Philippines. Let me make sure. Yes, the Philippines Grand Final. Um, that is what it is taken from. Um, and uh, I've already done a couple of videos from that Grand Final already. Um, so I just figured I'd go ahead and make uh, make another one. Uh, see what we have here. Um, I came across Julio Cisadora, uh, not personally, but um, I know that living in Texas, uh, you know, U University of Texas at Dallas is right down the street uh, from where I live and stuff. So, uh, you know, I remember checking, you know, the... Uh, you know the top players in the state and stuff like that and of course there's uh there's jeffrey Jean. you know he's the number one and there's alexander honest and there's him and stuff like that so anyway uh appreciate everybody coming by mary ming salamat po side nana nude uh ing king maga video uh you know kamusta akiba ga kabagan magandang umaga magandang kapon uh depending on when you watch this uh maayong buntag or maayong uh hapon uh, appreciate it very much. Uh, Kamusta. Mabuhai and got lucky to everybody out there. Uh, Maligi Young Pak Dading Sa A King channel. Uh, appreciate everybody coming by. Uh, and uh, I'll be learning some more words coming up. Um, but that that covers that. Um, if you guys are ready, uh, let's take a look and see what we have for this game. All right, so D4. Let me turn my volume up. Always remember, but sometimes I forget. All right, we got D4, D5. So we have C4, E6. Knight comes to F3. Uh, we have C5. Uh, so we have, uh, so I guess I didn't write that correctly. Um, so we have the Queen's Gambit decline is uh, the pseudo Tarash variation. I think it transposes into something else, but uh, just more simply, it's known as the Tarash. Uh, you know, you also have the ability before you play that, to, you know, play this and kind of see where white's going to go. You know, you might could have some Catalan type situations or, you know, just some typical Queen's Gambit stuff. Uh, before you commit to C5, um, it's definitely a good, uh, uh, it's it's not a bad, uh, it's one of the top moves. Um, so it's not uh, it's not dubious by any means. Uh, so we have pawn takes D5, pawn takes uh, D5, and we have knight to C3. You know, in this position, there's many different things you can do. I mean, there's bishop G5, uh, which is something I personally played. Uh, you know, there's just simple E3s. Um, you know, knight to c3 is definitely one of the one of the top moves as well. So we see knight to c6. We got g3. Uh, so uh, you know, uh, Nava is trying to you know, he's going to do a little bit of a fiend kettle situation, uh, which is very typical. Um, because since you do play d4, uh, you're not blocking this diagonal uh, normally. Um, and even when you do, um, you know, you're working on you know you're working on you know trading pieces and stuff like that in the middle. So you know, usually this diagonal becomes very open, uh, and it can be an issue. So, uh, you know, fianchettoing the bishop on this side is definitely a very common thing to do. Uh, so the knight comes to f6. Now, something that was actually uh, pretty good, though, in, this, in, in, the, in the position for white uh, was actually pawn takes c5. Um, it actually is just a little bit of a stronger uh, move to make uh, because, you know, you don't want to just take back uh, immediately uh, because then you'd be running into something like this. Uh, and you're just going to be dropping a pawn down, so you don't want that. So your most logical way is probably either knight to f6 or bishop to e6. Um, and those are pretty transposable because, I mean, you're going to end up with bishop to e3, bishop e7, queen to a4, uh, castles. You got g3 by white, bishop e6. So, you know, whether you play bishop to e6 first um, or knight to f6 first, they're both uh, making sure that you maintain control of this, e5, uh, this d, uh, d5 pawn. Um, but, uh, after Rook to D1, um, you will kind of see in this particular position, yeah, you are up a pawn. Um, it's not the easiest position in the world just simply because this bishop is kind of weirdly placed, but it's not the end of the world. And I mean, it is a pawn. So if we go to what we saw in the game, uh, we saw bishop to G2, 
uh, bishop to e7, uh, castles, we have castles by black, bishop to e3, we got c4, uh, we have knight to e5, we got rook to e8. So we have kind of a similar situation with the bishop here. Uh, so, but, you know, you didn't make the queen move and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, you were able to get castled and stuff like that. So, you know, it's just kind of like, you know, what do you want to do type situation. So, uh, and you definitely in this position, if we back up, you definitely don't want to go knight takes, uh, because the pawn is going to take, uh, and you're going to be kicking this knight away. Uh, and, uh, so now you have three pieces, you know, trained on this, uh, you know, D five square and this, it's not very pretty. So, uh. You know, Sidora does do the correct uh, thing here with rook to e8. So we see uh, queen to a4, and we have bishop to d7. Um, and this is actually the novelty of the game. The interesting thing is as of 2012, this was the novelty of the game up to that point, but it is actually still a novelty. Um, you know, there's only one move in the, there's only one game in the database that features this move, and it's this one. Uh, the only other games that we that I saw, uh, there was one other game, and it was rook to, uh, rook to b8. Uh, pretty simple. Uh, you know, you're looking at, uh, you know, pushing the, uh, the B pawn here, uh, with some, uh, I guess you couldn't do it at the moment. Mm -mm. Probably play Bishop here first and then B5. Yeah. Something like that. Not sure what the idea is behind that. Uh, that's the only thing I can think about on the fly real quick. So like I said, we did have Bishop to D7 novelty of 2012. Uh, so we see Knight takes D7, Queen takes D7. We got Bishop to G5. Uh, and then we have knight takes d4. After queen takes d7, knight takes d7, bishop takes e7, rook takes e7. We have e3. Uh, and uh, you know white is actually in a very uh, very good position um, in the, at, at this point. Uh, and uh, you know black has really only one retreating move. Uh, this is kind of a pause the thing situation, but you know I'm just gonna let you know what it is. Uh, but if you do want to pause it, feel free. But this is not the guess the move part. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the move is, uh, knight to e6. Uh, and, uh, after, uh, white captures on d5, uh, you see why knight to e6 has to be played, uh, because there's, there's only one move for the, for the rook to make. Um, and it is rook back here. Um, and I guess if you go, let me see here. If you go back here, it's going to be that. It's kind of dangerous though, I guess. I don't know. Maybe you can go here. Rook to e5, rook to e5. I don't know. Anyway. So we see rook back to e8, uh, and the knight to e6 is uh, defending this c7 square because uh, we definitely don't want the knight to come here and fork these two beautiful rooks. Uh, so the, the knight is, uh, you know, defending against that. So we see rook a to c1. We got rook a to c8. We got rook f to d1. Uh, we have king to f8. Um, and this is the point in the video, if you want to go ahead and stop it uh, and see what uh, the best move is uh, for white, uh, go ahead and do so. All right, cool. So, pretty much every single video I make, I I, I like harp on a concept. Uh, it's something that if anybody who watches my stuff, they would know that I say this like almost every single video I make, uh, and it is restricting the movement of your opponent's knights. Uh, you know, and it can happen at any point in the game, uh, but a lot of times, uh, you know. When you get into like a middle game, the queens have been traded, the tactics go way down. You start to get more positional. You start to get more like restricting. Uh, and I mean, defensive chess is just as strong in a lot of cases as offensive chess. Uh, so even though you're not making like, you know, threats, if you can restrict your opponent's possibilities, um, it can give you a better position. Uh, and the, the, the move that was actually played in the game is bishop to f1. Um, but that actually gives, uh, you know, the white, white had like a really, really crushing advantage up to this point here. Uh, and that just pretty much gives it, that pretty much equalizes the, the game. Uh, the move was F4. Uh, and you'll see why this was necessary. Um, because, uh, you know, you're preventing the knight from coming into here. Uh, and you're undermining like the protection of this pawn here. And so it makes it a little harder to defend. Uh, and so... We would see something like probably rook to uh, e rook e to d8, and then we would see a4. And as you can see, uh, you're trying to make it really really hard for black to defend this pawn. Uh, you want to keep it weak, and so uh, you know what we saw in the game was bishop to f1, and so we did see the knight come into e5, uh, and then unfortunately after f4, it doesn't do really what you wanted to do uh, because the knight just plops down in this nice little outpost, 
Uh, and of course, you're not going to take with the rook, so you're going to have to take with the bishop. So now you've given up your bishop in an open position. Um, so it's just like little stuff like that uh, that makes the difference in the game. Um, and so we see pawn takes d3, rook takes c8, rook takes c8, uh, and then we have knight to c3, knight back to c3. Uh, we got uh, knight to c5. Uh, we have e4, rook to e8. We see king to f2. You know, of course, if we see something like this. You know, we're just going to be taken back and everything's everything's extra even. So we don't see that. We see B5. Uh, and then we see king to F3 protecting that pawn. Uh, we see B4. We see knight to D5. And then A5 protects the, the pawn here on B4 because it was attacked. So we see B3. We have rook to D8. We have king to E3. Uh, we have F5, which is a really beautiful move um, by Sidora because, uh, you know, it's it's basically like i was saying before the concept is like you know this is a really strong pawn uh and uh right now it is holding this knight uh so you're trying to undermine the protection of the knight and you're also trying to damage you know white's pawn structure uh because they have a nice like pawn chain going uh and you have your pawns are, are not as good you know you have these this you know uh connected pawns uh but then you have this isolated pawn and then you have these pawns over here which is not the end of the world but if you have a more unhealthy pawn chain, pawn structure than your opponent, you do want to do something to try to like equalize it, uh, you know, to make it just as hard for them to play as it would be for you. Uh, so f5, you know, perfectly does that. So we see knight to c7. We see pawn takes e4. Uh, so as you can see, you know, black has given themselves two really, really nice looking uh, connected pass pawns. Uh, and so they've greatly, uh, you know, lifted up their, you know, their, um, their pawn structure, you know, their position. Uh, so the rook comes to c1. Uh, we have rook to d7. Rook takes c5. But unfortunately, you do have this rook uh, behind this really, really, like, beautiful pass pawn. Uh, and there's not really a good way to, you know, do anything uh, to stop it. So we see d2. Rook comes to f5 with check. Uh, we see king over to g8. Knight to e6. And being careful uh, that we don't checkmate ourselves. Uh, we see rook to d8. And then knight takes d8, queen takes, uh, or pawn goes to d1 with queens. Uh, because, you know, of course, if we, uh, if we get too, if we get too eager, uh, we're going to be getting checkmated here on the back rank. Uh, you know, in conjunction with this rook and this knight, or this knight and this rook. So we don't want that. So, uh, you know, we go, uh, rook to d8, protecting against the checkmate. Uh, and after pawn takes, like I said, we did have the queens. Uh, king takes e4, queen takes d8, um, and we have rook to d5. And we see queen to e8 with check. King goes to d4. Queen comes and penetrates down with e2. We see rook takes a5. Queen takes h2. Rook to g5, you know, trying as best you can to hold on to these pawns. Uh, and then queen takes a2. We have king to c4. And then we have queen to d2. Um, and it is in this position uh, that Roderick Nava does resign. Um, and it's just simply because this pawn cannot be defended. Um, and after this pawn drops, this pawn is moving down the board. Uh, and you have way too many tactics and fork possibilities uh, if you don't, you know, move the rook and the king close together. So you probably would have to do something like this. But then after queen checks on c3, the king would come to d5. And then you'd also be looking at, you know, check here on b3. Uh, so, you know, you your king is really out of there. You're really trying to hold on to the connection that you have between the king and the rook. Uh, but the thing about queen in games, uh, you know, a queen and a king versus a king and a rook. Um, it's always going to be possible uh, for the technique to be able to separate the rook and the king. Uh, you cannot hold them together forever. Uh, so that's one of the you know ways that you just separate. And then plus, you just have too many, you have too, just too much material. You know, this pawn is going to, you know, you can always try to trade or do something with the queen and the rook to, to make this be a pass pawn. A completely you know pass pawn so that is uh that is that game and like i said it's br brought from the 2012 uh philippines grand final uh, uh mary makes salamat po uh a king my guy kai begun um you know in god like you to you guys my boo high uh for you guys that are eating breakfast i almost saw tie y'all um and i appreciate you guys coming by and um and let me see that's yeah that's it um if you have any other videos that you'd like for me to do feel free to let me know if you want to, if you donate and you do want my, your name on there and have me shout you out, let me know and I will do that. Uh, and I appreciate you guys and I'll see you next time.